South Dakota received an F from the Prison Policy Initiative and the ACLU, along with 40 other states. That's when it comes to how COVID-19 was handled in our state prisons. South Dakota has one of the highest incarceration rates per capita in the nation, and crowded prisons made social distancing impossible. As a result, more than 2,300 inmates in the state's prisons caught the virus, seven died. In tonight's Kettleland News investigation, Angela Kennecke looks into the South Dakota Department of Corrections response to the virus and what some say could have been done differently to save lives. In 2016, Kettleland Investigates revealed ongoing hazards in our state prisons, from crowding and mismanagement to high turnover among prison staff, resulting in shortages. Some of those same issues, along with the nature of the COVID-19 virus, created the perfect storm in South Dakota's prisons. We began this investigation when a prison sentence becomes a death sentence. South Dakota's crowded state prisons became home to one of the highest percentages of COVID-19 prisoner infection rates in the nation, according to the Marshall Project. 52-year-old Leslie Bars was serving a four-and-a-half-year sentence for having and dealing meth. He had an addiction. He had a, he had a problem. Bars' wife of nearly 30 years, Rochelle, says his addiction also played a role in his many health issues. Heart, kidneys, liver, diabetes. When cases of COVID-19 began multiplying in prison, Bars requested an early release. When COVID came out, he said that if I get this and I die from it, you know, I want it to be known that, you know, I wasn't protected. He said I came here for a prison sentence, not a death sentence. North Dakota granted an early release to 56 inmates in order to protect them from catching COVID-19. In March of 2020, the ACLU called upon South Dakota to take several steps which would have allowed more inmates an early release and let out those being held on probation or parole violations but not yet convicted. The state did not implement those recommendations. On both of those issues, I think the state's dropped the ball considerably and basically has, has done nothing, uh, put into place nothing new in regard to the coronavirus spread. Roger Barron is a retired University of South Dakota law professor who has worked to try to reform South Dakota's prison system and reduce high incarceration rates. I definitely think that there was a much better chance for a lower mortality rate had these steps been taken as, as encouraged back in March of 2020. Out of the 2,341 cases of COVID-19 among South Dakota's prisoners, these seven inmates died. Leslie Bars was one of them. My dad, just, he could have been here, or at least, you know, still alive. What do you miss most about him? Everything, he was my best friend. I just feel kind of robbed, because... It, it honestly did feel like they didn't care. Reckless uh, is the word I would use. Delabar says he learned his brother had fallen ill and had been sick for about a week from his son, who was Leslie's cellmate. Oh, his breathing was funny, and he was kind of delirious a little about it. And he wasn't taken to the hospital? No, he was, he was begging for help. Um, and, and the prisoners who were aware of his situation and how dire it was becoming were banging on the windows and, and trying to get people's attention to come and help him. Eventually, Leslie was removed from his cell. They came in, they put him in a chair and they rolled him out into the lobby and he sat there for another few hours in the chair, um, seemingly unconscious until the ambulance came. Rochelle was allowed to visit her husband in the hospital before he died. He wanted to hear my voice one last time and tell me that he loved me. And he just wanted to, wanted me to tell, you know, all the kids and the family members and siblings and stuff, though, how much he loved them. Leslie Bars's roommate in the COVID-19 unit of Avera McKinnon Hospital was fellow inmate Clayton Creek. Creek died two days before Bars. I looked at him, at Clayton, and I said, I don't know if you're a praying man. I'm mostly not. I said, but I'm going to say a prayer for you. And 
you know, uh, the, the next time I came, he was gone. There was one guy, uh, his name was Clayton Creek. He, he, um, he was my celly. Clayton, he, um, he had about six months left. And he was obviously an older guy. Like, he, had, he was a higher risk. So I feel like they should have released him. They should have let him go home. Richard Wood Roska is serving time for aggravated assault at the Jameson Annex at the Sioux Falls Prison. He spoke to Kevin Land Investigates on the phone about what it was like behind bars during the COVID-19 outbreak. Wood Roska claims too little was done to protect healthy inmates from exposure to those who were sick. When we lined up for chow, like they would release like 60 inmates at a time for chow and there's not enough room for that many inmates to come out. And so everybody is like elbow distance away from each other. So everybody's coughing, breathing on each other. He says both he and his current cellmate got sick. Uh, we were both just sick as dogs. And they came in, tested us. He tested positive, I tested negative. And so they put me in quarantine and let him go roam around. Rochelle heard similar concerns from Leslie. It didn't make sense because they were moving people that had COVID with people that didn't have it. He said, so I don't know if why they're moving us the way they are. The South Dakota Department of Corrections denied our request for an interview. In an email to Kettleman Investigates, the DOC says it activated a plan to continue operations during the pandemic with the primary focus on safety, sanitation, security, and supervision. However, under South Dakota law, that emergency response plan is not public. But the DOC posted periodic updates online and says it followed the South Dakota Department of Health's and CDC's precautions, practices, and prevention methods for COVID-19. We also asked Governor Kristi Noem if South Dakota did enough. I think that our Department of Corrections worked very hard in partnership with our Department of Health to make sure we are protecting those who are in our prison system. Do you hold the Department of Corrections accountable? Well, I think you have to. Um, somebody is accountable. Um, he, my brother, did his best in relaying every bit of his information that he could to them to, to be protected and, you know, relating his fears to them as well um, w with nothing happening. In South Dakota, compassionate parole is possible for those with terminal illness, but it has only ever been granted to three prisoners. Candidates for compassionate parole must be at least 65 years old and have served at least 10 years of their sentences. The seven inmates who died of COVID-19 would not have qualified. Uh, 191 prison staff also got the virus. All have recovered. California had the highest number of prisoner deaths reported due to COVID at 222. But when you look at the number of total prisoners, both California and South Dakota had the same percentage of deaths along with six other states.